Hello, I'm Neil Dealey, co-founder and partner of Architects and Urban Planners Metropolitan Workshop. Welcome to Reshaped, a podcast series to mark our 15th year and to record perspectives on how the built environment is changing and needs to change in this historic moment. We ask leading thinkers and doers to respond to issues highlighted by the pandemic while we're in the throes of change and memories and perspectives are fresh. Has the door opened to a new era? We think so. Born to a Sikh immigrant family in Spitalfields in the 1960s, Suresh Singh is as cockney as they come, a genuine East End voice. His interest is in the spirit of architecture, which was instilled in him by his father from an early age. In this podcast, he bears witness to the enormous changes he's seen to London's East End. His studies in architecture at the Polytechnic of Central London and the Bartlett and the leading counterculture academics he met there developed his very particular view of what really matters in architecture. My father came to Spitalfields in 1949. He was one of the first Sikhs that came over. Uh, I was born in the 60s um, in Brick Lane. So I'm born and bred Brick Lane boy. So I've seen a lot of changes. When I was a kid, it was a slum, you know. Um, my father came because he could sleep in the doorways. Um, he could pick up food and fruit from Spitalfields Market and feed us, feed my mother, and feed um, 50 people who lived in our house. My father picked up people from the streets um, and he fed them because that was his way, you know. He, he took his Sikhism with him um, and he had this notion of serving um, amongst the architecture, amongst the Hawksmoor, amongst the, the, the beautiful Huguenot buildings. These houses were three-storey houses. Uh, but my father didn't get them because of the architectural beauty. The architecture, he always said, was within him. And then as I grew up, I saw all this around me. Um, Ugliness I saw in the streets of Brick Lane. I see the changes, I see the gentrification, but when I was a kid, there was a beauty of architecture. I am what I am because I I was brought up in the streets of Spitfields in Brick Lane. I was born there. But my father always said, keep your Sikhism within you. And so I had this kind of like real dynamics of um, the architecture within and the architecture outside. So the changes we've seen are immense. I think the pandemic, the COVID pandemic, is, is affected the whole way people are thinking and living now because now suddenly people's space is their bedroom. People no longer can go out to their shiny offices. I know that people started coming into the 70s and 60s because they worked in the city. And so they could walk in to Spitalfields very quickly. But now they have to stay indoors <laughs> during lockdown. It's kind of affected that whole um, way of looking at architecture again. The spirit of architecture has always been dear to me because my father instilled it. I mean, I was lucky later on that I studied architecture in the 70s, there was like a real hipster type of teachers in the East End. They were, they were Trotskyites, Marxists, Leninists. They were like revolutionary. And my teachers would smoke in class and say we're going to start the revolution. But it was that kind of discourse that made it um, like, and punk was coming. So we had all these like kind of different ways of looking at things and working. And this spirit of architecture kind of then it's followed me right through my life until now. Because when I went to, um, to the Polytechnic of Central London, at that time, it was a cutting edge. Um, and David Green was there. He was one of the Archigram founders. And they were like the punks of architecture. So they were saying, like, architecture's dead. And, I, and they're saying, architecture's more to do, is not to do with buildings. It's to do with the interaction of people. 
and how people and individuals relate to each other. So I thought that was fantastic. Oh, wow. I thought I came here to do architecture because I, I trained as a carpenter and joiner. Um, and then I was told, well, you know, do some sculpture or look at different ways. Look, And now I look back at that and I adore it. And then I went on to do my diploma in architecture at the Bartlett School and that was taken over by Sir Peter Cook. And I'm thinking... Why does like every time I go, why can't I just have this kind of my normal background, you know? Why can't I why why, why can't I be born in like Hemel Hampstead or something, you know? And and like went to sort of Cambridge Arch School of Architecture and did like the you know, the biscuit tin stuff that Peter Cook sort of slams. Um But this kind of punk and this sort of kind of anarchic way of looking at things gives you the love of architecture. And then architecture is just not just about buildings and bricks and shiny pits of glass. It's about human beings and how mums relate to their children and how kids relate to space, how different generations meet, um, the romance of like meeting points. Um, and that spirit is, 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 is needs to be put back together because... An, a beautiful piece of architecture can be, you know, just you sharing your milk bottles with your neighbour and being kind to each other. Um, my father and my tutors kind of instilled this kind of beauty that it isn't all about the be- a beautiful building because you could live in a beautiful building and be miserable. The, the accidental beauty of every day is that lovely kind of... Um, charm and romance that you 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 find you know um peter cook always said to me i love standing at a bus stop and looking at second-rate buildings like not done by architects because i kind of look at it and think i wonder what that guy was thinking about you know so you're kind of thinking about geometry you're thinking about space and this sort of kind of serendipity of architecture and this kind of like thinking well how did that come about, you know? And it's that kind of beauty of the, uh, how things are put together. Um, and it's, you don't carry all the, um, the luggage of a lot of architects carry, and it's sometimes really boring because they... I remember architecture school, everybody wanted to do a Mies van der Rohe building, and then everybody wanted to do a Luca Busier building, and then everybody wanted to do a, a Zaha Hadid building. So everybody was like kind of, well, but what about doing kind of your own building, you know? Um, and that kind of the accidental is that my my father said that you never um, prescribe things, you never put things in boxes, you never um, have this kind of like poshness about architecture. You know, architecture can be um, not all these glossy architectural magazines. It can be in the bus. You know, my dad used to love the little bell you pulled. He thought that's very architectural, you know. And it's the beautiful sense of detail that you you came across. Or, you know, sometimes the way people would um, put bits of wood together um, to hold up, you know, their clothes. They're, them kind of beautiful elements um, have that kind of kind of boffin tradition, really, and that it, almost high tech <laughs> kind of aspect of how how you put things together. And that's the beauty of of architecture because architecture can be in lots of things, you know, and we, um, come on, let's just not be so academic about it, you know, Let's, let's enjoy it and let's share it with people. Suresh Singh talks about the architectural spirit a spirit he thinks is rooted in the accidental beauty of the everyday. This may seem somewhat abstract, but captures some of the truth about how architects' training can remove them from the everyday, and how the public feel about architecture and places. Let's not be so academic about things, is his plea. It's about the interaction of people, and maybe it is that spirit of accidental beauty that we should always be seeking to create. You can listen to other podcasts in the Reshape series at all the major providers or go to our website, metwork.co.uk. Series directed by Lee Mallet, produced by David Michon and Justina Green. 
recorded and edited by Sean Crook.